a lot of times when men and women would travel to India in the wrestling community, somebody would come back not feeling so well for whatever reason. And William Regal had an issue, which I guess almost was uh, may have had an issue with his heart or something like that. But we've heard of all sorts of stories. But I hope we get none of those stories from the crew that comes back who performed at the Superstar Spectacle today at the Balayogi Indoor Stadium in Hyderabad, India. And these results are up on the front page of the website. This is the first time WWE has been to India since 2000. 2017. They played a video from Becky Lynch apologizing because she had a tiny tear in her passport that prevented her from getting on Cutter Airlines. She made sure to post them in her tweet about the issue. Uh, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Drew McIntyre defeated Indus Share, Veer Sangha, and Jinder Mahal. It started as a tag match with Owens and Zayn against Veer and Sangha, and then turned into a six man when Jinder got involved. Natalia defeated Zoe. Zoe Stark to advance to a title match against Rhea Ripley later on in the show. Rhea Ripley went on to beat Natalia a little bit later on. I guess Lynch and Stark, uh, it's hypothesized here on the website. Uh, that was probably supposed to be the original match. Gunther defeated Shanky to retain I gotta see this. the Intercontinental title. How do you celebrate breaking the Honky Tonk Man's 454-day record or whatever the hell it was? You go to India and you smack around Shanky and you retain the title well, there. We don't know that's necessarily what happened. This could be you know, one of those hidden gem matches that shows up in 30 years like Bret Hart and Tom McGee or Tom <laughs> Waller versus Serpentico. <laughs> We're going to get Gunther versus Shanky and... Probably Braun Breaker versus Odyssey Jones on that same comp. Yeah, Braun Breaker defeated Odyssey Jones on the show. Uh, and John Cena and Seth Rollins defeated Imperium in the main events. The first time that John Cena had ever wrestled in India. So a lot more to get into, including tonight's SmackDown and Rampage. And a whole lot more when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. Ooh, killer Mike coming in hot. Mike Semper maybe here with you. Not a killer. You know who is, though? Filthy Tom Lawler. Here with all of the scoops. Who needs Brian Alvarez? Filthy is here letting us know what's going down on NXT. Bringing you into the weekend, which is going to be a busy one. Filthy Smackdown's in Boston tonight. You like Boston? Absolutely love it. One of the best cities on planet Earth, especially in the summer. I don't know how the weather is today, but that is a top U.S. destination if you haven't been. If you have, it should go back. <laughs> Grayson Waller apparently wishes uh, he had a torn passport, does not want to be in Boston tonight. He tweeted that out on his social media. We also got an addition to the card tonight, which the Brawling Brutes going up against the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest defending their newly won undisputed tag team championship for the first time so that is now added alongside aj styles and jimmy uso in a story that started to build last week i wonder if we're going to get that split with uh, styles and anderson and gallows just feels like that that's probably going to happen and charlotte flair and shotzi against bailey and eo sky so any thoughts on that no, it seems like a continuation of a lot of feuds that have been going on and the Jimmy Uso and AJ Styles feud being a new one. But obviously Charlotte's had her issues with EO and the rest of Damage Control, as has Shotzi, who had sort of a grudge match against Bailey last week uh, on SmackDown. And what else did he mention for the show? Uh, Styles Uso, Flair and Shotzi, Bailey EO, and then the Brutes and Judgment Day. Uh, the Brutes and Judgment Day there. Yeah. Well, I guess that's new. <laughs> it is, but I, I don't mean, think the result is uh, quite in doubt. No, I would expect the Judgment Day to retain those titles. I wasn't surprised uh, that they beat Owens and Zayn, especially just as the match was going on. You know, it just felt like it was kind of going in that direction. And, hey, why not? I mean, I don't know what else you're going to do with Sammy and Kevin in that position. I don't think that they necessarily lose 
any of their luster. You can keep them both at the top of the card. You could put them in singles matches. You could put them back into tag team matches. Now, Sammy has Jay Uso to play with. Kevin Owens can get involved there, obviously, as well. So that added a lot of wrinkles um, to an otherwise, you know, like it was a non-factor. It was something I had not even considered was Jay Uso showing up on Raw and having all these issues once again with Sami Zayn. So uh, I kind of like it as a direction. I, I'm going to throw it into the ether, and I'll keep an eye on the chat when I do this, too. You like it. I'm open to see where it goes. Uh, I, I wonder if there's anybody out there, though, that goes, well, damn, we could have seen some really good tag team title matches between Owens and Zayn and had them bounce around. And obviously, Kevin Owens has been, I'm sure he needs some time to rest up. Maybe that's why he wasn't there. But do you think, uh, or, or is there anybody out there, I wonder that, would complain that this is just building a bloodline storyline on Raw with Sammy and Jay, and that's going to be too much of a shadow over things with everybody who doesn't like him because the bloodline has screwed him in the past and, and that sort of thing. How do you try to make this fresh and new, I guess, is is really what I would ask you. Is it is it possible when it comes to the Reign storyline, or you just keep chugging the way you're chugging? Well, there's definitely a lot of like gray area in this one because Jay is now clearly positioned as a baby face, but he has done all of these horrible dastardly acts in the past to a number of the raw wrestlers attack them on the name of the bloodline to, you know, help further Roman Reigns chances as champion. Uh, virtually all of the title challengers, you know, were beaten up by Jay or Jimmy or Solo. It was never, it might have just been Roman Reigns winning the matches in some cases, but it was never just one person against Roman Reigns. It was one person against the bloodline, uh, which Jay obviously was an integral, integral part of. I don't think you're going to have fans like turn on Drew McIntyre because he doesn't want to deal with Jay. I don't think you're going to have fans turn on Kevin Owens because of their past. Uh, but well, I don't, well, I also don't think it, resist I don't the think, urge to, to turn Kevin Owens. Well, I think Drew would obviously would be more likely to turn heel as well in this situation. I don't think you're going to have the fans boo Jay Uso almost in any situation, maybe against Sami Zayn. Right. And that's about, yeah, it. that would be about it. I think that would probably be about it, but uh, you know, there's there actually you can, you can going... say what you want, like Mike. You could say whatever you want about it, like the storyline, but mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wasn't a fan of the SummerSlam title match, the uh, whatever it was, the the Bloodline Rules match. Oh yeah, but Jay Uso is still super over with the crowd, so ridiculously I mean, having them having them out there on tv is not a bad idea no no it absolutely is not so it looks like drew mcintyre is going to be turning again it'll be interesting to see what the dynamic is with kevin owens who in storyline was beyond done with dealing with the bloodline and he was happy teaming with sammy and he's still got anger issues from what we know so it'll be interesting to see how they make some of this fresh and new. And again, I'm open to it. I'm fine with taking this ride with the bloodline. Even, you know, all the times I thought they maybe should have done something. They've proven that, well, no, this is overall worked, you know, the way that they're doing it. So I'll continue to take the ride. And then Anthony Bowens starts talking about Mr. Ass. <laughs> He's in tears talking about Mr. Ass. One more time, he says, from your couch at home. Scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they oh, used to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search. <laughs> <laughs> For an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh really? Well, wow, that's that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor wait a second. There's an article on this. 
Can you can you send me this article? Okay, all right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Now, if you hello, told me, hello, hello. Craig, please. What were we talking about? I don't know. Wrestling Dynamite? or something. Okay. Collision. Collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action and ready of Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. <laughs> Sorry. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.